over you but you got because we know oh God that you are bigger than what people say and what people think and so Father God we know Father God that you are able to do exceedingly and more and abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think or imagine Come on, put five more minutes into this thing. Lord God Almighty, as we are about to do Bible study tonight, Lord, we pray that every mind will be receptive to the word. Every mind, every will, every emotion, Lord God, will line up, mighty God, and the presence of the Almighty God, the glory of God, the Holy Ghost, will walk through the people mind and will make the people receive the word of the Lord, mighty God, to carry them forth, mighty God, through this week, because outside of the road is not easy, and so Father, in the name of Jesus, we call upon you tonight, and we say, Father, release your power, release your glory, release your anointing, over this ministry, in the name of Jesus, let every crooked activity become straight, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Oh Father, tonight, let the people be glorified, their own soul and mind in the Lord. For you are God and God by yourself. Father, we call upon you tonight for your mighty. And so tonight, Father, we give you glory. And we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Come on, just, just worship the Lord. Just worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord. You know, I know the speaker is going to come on. And, and I know that we're going to get some good work tonight. But I, I, I have something that I, the Lord has been em, 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 embracing on my, on my mind, on my spirit. To teach you also about the, the connection in the realm of the spirit. The deepness of the realm. You know, I, it, because one of the things that I realize that, that the body of Christ is locking is the is the is the into messy into me into me messy into me. That means when you when you're into something, you are being one with, with, the, with that thing. You understand? And how to do that? Oh, Jesus. Almighty God. I, I just want to give you this quickly before the word of God comes. Amen. And so tonight, as she begins to give you the word. I want you to I want you to listen to what the psalmist says. He said, in the word I meditate day and night. That means he, he, he takes a word out of the Bible. He takes a word that is that is that is you know consistent with his situation, what he's going through. And he takes it and he meditates on it. And, and when he meditates on it, he meditates on the word till he lost. He lost in the realm of the spirit, meditating on that word. So you have to come out of your flesh. So when you come out of your flesh, you, you, you meditate in that word. When you in this word, you meditate in your life. So you come out of your body because God is a spirit. So you meditate on the word till you just come out. And you, you find yourself begin to operate like the word. It's as simple as that. You just begin to operate like the word. You start to operate like the word. Are you hearing me? So if, if, you, if the Bible says that you are blessed and highly favored, you begin to, you begin to meditate on the word blessed, highly favored, and you lost yourself in the realm of the spirit. You take it in prayer to God. And as you do so, I am telling you, things will change. Now, if you see a man of God, and he's carrying great anointing in his life, and you want that, look, you take that with a scripture into prayer. And you meditate on it. And you say, Lord, I, I, I must see even better than you. Can you hear me? And when you, when you begin to go in the realm of the spirit, and you begin to love yourself in meditation, you find yourself that the manifestation that is on that man's life is beginning to fall on you. Because you desire what he can. Are you 
spirit. That's why it is important to have a spiritual father. It's very important that you have a set man over your life in the house of the Lord that can impart the anointing upon your life so that we can move forward. So tonight, as the woman of God comes, I pray that you will get the word and you will, oh my God, I am charged. I hear it. I am ready. Oh God, you don't know what God is doing. God is doing some great and mighty things. And there are new and greater dimension in the Holy Ghost. As you, as you, as you begin to think things, you will, you will see great manifestation of your life. No one can stop you from being great. Are you hearing me? If you want to be great, no one can stop you. Don't make nobody fool you. If you want to be great, then you need to be great. You can't be great. All you have to do is meditate on the word. And the word is everything. I, I call for the pastor. The senior pastor belongs. God bless you. Hallelujah. To, when it comes to the word of God, I am very excited. Amen. And one of the reasons I am excited, listen, no matter how much we pray, right? Prayer doesn't grow us. What grows us is the revelation of the word. The day you stop learning is the day you stop growing. Amen. Everybody's seen water. When the river flows, the water is always fresh. But when the water stays stagnant, after a while, what happens? You see algae. You see the water begins to what? Stink. Because things, it settles, it's stagnant, it doesn't move. There is no free, free flow. So when, you, when someone stays constant or stagnant, they begin to what? Stay stunted. Just like a tree and a flower pots. When you plant a seed, you put it in the flower pot, but as it begins to grow up, the root begins to what, expand. So the more we leave that particular plant in the pot, the size or the shape of that flower pot restricts its growth. Amen. Now, in order for that plant to become a tree, it has to be relocated. It has to be taken away from the flower pot the temporary location and be what planted in a permanent location. Amen. Now, when the Bible speaks in, in Psalm chapter 1, it says uh, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. If everybody understands the description of a river, a river is a, is, is a body of water that flows. It flows. And a river is good for so many things. For drinking, for washing, for bathing, for tithing, for hygiene. So as you are planted, you receive the amount of water that helps you to grow. You receive the amount of water that is necessary, not just for your growth, but for your stability. Now the Bible equates water as the word. That the word is able to wash us by the cleansing of water. So the more we take in the world is the more we grow thereby. The Bible says that you what you take the engrafted what with what with meekness that you may grow thereby. The reason most of us don't grow is because we don't have the revelation of the world. It is good to pray. It is good to spend time with the world. But when you pray and pray and pray, God always sends you back to the world. Even though you know God's voice when you pray, when God when, when things are being said, you might not understand it because you don't know how God speaks. But when you study His Word, when you read the Bible, when the Holy Ghost gives you revelation, you know how God speaks and you know His voice. Now, when you read the Bible, the Bible tells you about God. That when somebody says something otherwise, you are able to confirm or say no. This is not how God operates. Because the day you stop learning about God, the day you begin to die. I can equate it as being backslidden, so to speak. The Bible says the entrance of the world giveth life and light. Now as light comes, illumination comes. As 
as light comes, revelation comes. That when that light is being quenched, what happens? Darkness automatically what takes over the place. When I speak about darkness, I speak of ignorance. Now you can know the state of a man by reason of how intimate they are with God. You can know the thing. You know you hear people saying you can't judge people. Yes, of course you can judge. But by reason of the word, the Bible says that a spiritual man judging all things that he himself is not judged by any. But when you see, the Bible says by their fruit you shall know them. Let me give a typical example. If you go to a doctor and you tell the doctor, I am having a headache. And this headache is located on one side. And it affects my eyes. I can't even look in the lights. Now, based on the description, based on the signs you are giving to the doctor, the doctor can be able to come to a, a diagnosis. At that point in time, it is the doctor judging your case. So when people talk about judging, it depends on the context is being used. So the doctor can listen to you and you tell him all the signs and the symptoms of what you are going through. And he can tell you, based on the evidence before him, he can say without a shadow of that, this is the kind of headache you are feeling. Just like the Bible says that evil communication corrupts good manners, it is true. The Bible says do not be friends with an angry man. Let, let you become like him. In other words, the Bible can judge by your association how you will end up. So when people say don't judge, you just look at them and laugh and say, you, say, you don't understand. Now the more of the revelation of the word of God you have, the more depths you receive in God. Now prayer, when you, come, when you study the word, prayer becomes easy. I hear people say, I can't pray. It's because you don't take in the word. If you read the word enough, you will be able to pray enough. Because in the word is your ability to pray. In other words, when you open the Bible, the word itself is a prayer language. The Bible, the, the Bible says that the disciple told Jesus, teach us to pray us. John the Baptist taught his disciples to pray. And Jesus gave them a scroll. And this is the pattern of your prayer. It was written. Now imagine Jesus as a child. The Bible says he was 12 years old when he started going to the temple. As a little boy, he went in the temple and he studied. Understand this. He was the son of God. The only begotten of God. The Bible says he left his domain and he took on the form of a man. And at the age of 12, he has to subject himself to the likeness of man. That even as a child, he needed to study. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. That he went at the age of 12 and he started the word. He read the Bible. He was so full of the word that even the scholars, the men that were older than him, the, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they call them the, 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 the masters of the law. The Bible says they listened to him, and when they listened to him, they were astonished by his doctrine. So sometimes prayer is good, but your growth is dependent on the revelation of the word of God. Hallelujah. Before I came up, I gave you all a green paper. Now I have a reason why I gave you up. Because whatever I do here, there has to be a take-home information. Now the green paper is for you to write what you struggle with. What is it you struggle with? Nobody has to, don't write your name. I was supposed to bring the box, the small box was supposed to be here, I took it back in. You drop it, it was just scrambling, and I read it and I will address them. Because it doesn't make sense when I teach you and you don't grow, it doesn't make any sense. So the word of God is able to what? Build you up. Build you up. Desire the sincere meek of the word. So it takes the word of God to bring about a growth in your life. That is why people go to church for a hundred years and nothing about them changes. The Bible says Jesus looked at Peter. He said, Satan has desired to sit you as sweet. But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. What is faith? In order for you to have faith, there has to be an entrance of the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And fear cometh.
led by hearing and hearing by the word of man. People speak, the word of God speaks. Whose voice do you listen to determine how far you will go in this life? With God it is possible. Growth is possible. So Jesus says, I want you to grow. It means that at the age of 20, he started to study. When his parents took him to Shiloh, and they left, the Bible says they forgot Jesus. They thought he was in the crowd. And they went home. So when they got home, they remembered, ah, where is my child? And the Bible says when they went back, they said for him for days. When they finally found him, he was where? At the temple. With who? With the Pharisees. The people of the law. And he sat down and he taught based upon the knowledge he has gotten by reason of his study. Do you know if we don't study, it is easier for us to be swindled, to be told a lie, to be deceived. That every doctrine seems like the word of God. And even when it's been watered down, we can't even have sensitivity to know that this is not the word. Let me give you an example. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, that God told Adam, of every fruit you can eat, but of this very tree, thou shalt not touch it. On the day you eat from it, you will surely die. And the Bible says, when Adam was busy, the devil entered into the serpent, and the serpent told him, as God really said. Now sometimes when you walk with God, when you study the word, and God speaks to you, you have to hold on to the word God has told you. Because the enemy will come and test that word. And he said to him, did God really say that you will die? And he told him, yes. We shall neither touch nor eat. And the devil told her, do you know you will not surely die? Half truth, half lie. A half truth and a half lie is what? It's a complete lie. And the devil told her, by reason of her not being grounded in the world, she was deceived. And she lost her dominion. And Adam lost his dominion also. Now when I talk about spiritual warfare, that's what I'm going to. I am talking about the change in our mindset. The change in our thought pattern. The change in the way we perceive things and receive things. Because what the enemy comes to do, he doesn't come to fight us physically. He comes to fight our mind. Our mind is what he comes to fight. That is why the Bible says, let us mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. That is why the Bible says that your mind be what? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let the word of God dwell in you richly, that you may be able to discern good and evil. But it is so easy to be led astray if we don't know the one. If we don't know who we are fighting with or who is ahead of us. So many times Jesus says, search the scriptures. Study. Desire to know me. Desire to know me. You cannot go far in life, especially in Christendom, if you don't study. The Bible says in 2nd second, second chapter 10, He said, For the weapons of our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty true God. Now, we, we dealt with all that two weeks, three weeks ago. Now, the question is, what are these weapons the Bible talk about? What are the weapons the Bible talk about? Hallelujah. Listen, in this kingdom, there are certain things God do for you. But there are certain things God expects you to do. He is a king. When you enter his domain, when you enter his kingdom, there are certain things that causes you to want to be allegiant to the one you call master. He will do that for you. Now your love is being tested. Your solidarity is being tested. Who do you stand with? Are you all of me or you are some of me? That is why when I called you and brought you, I gave my all for you. The question is now, are you giving your all for me? For God so loved the world that he gave his only, the only thing that was dead to him was what he gave. Without looking back, 
without thinking twice. He came on. One thing that is very sentimental. Everything that is God was invested in Jesus. And God said, you know what? Because I love them too much, I will give them all. Now let's reciprocate. Do you love God enough that you are able to give him your all? Ooh. It's hard, you know, God. You sure I can give up this, give up that, give up that. I am so used and I am so comfortable in where I am and I don't think I can give it up. But I gave my all. Now when people talk about love, people don't understand what love is. Until you understand love, you don't know how to act in love. God demonstrated it while we were yet sinners. Jesus died. Now that he died, what are you doing to compensate for the love that he gave? Now when we talk about spiritual warfare, our mindset is the most important thing when it comes to battles. The way we win our battles, or when before the battle is being fought, it has to be won somewhere. It's either you are being won or you are being defeated. Here is where the battles Amen. fight. So when things happen to you, how do you react? How do you respond? What is your approach to situations? Here. You want to make certain decisions. How does the decision come? Here. Turn your Bible to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Look at from this thing. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the, and in the power of his mind. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, against the ritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. To stand. Stand therefore. And after you have done everything, stand. Stand, fight. After you are fought, stand. But you say, Lord God, I've been praying. I've been praying. Nothing is happening. Answering. Keep praying. He said, after you have stood, stand. After you have stood to fight, stand. If you don't see it coming, stand. If things are not working your way, keep pressing. The Bible says in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, he said, Jesus said a parable unto this one. He said, men ought to always pray and not to faith. And he gave a parable that there was a certain king that knew not God. And there was a widow in that same city. And every day the widow went to the king and said, avenge me of my enemy. Avenge me of the things that people are doing to me. Avenge me. And the Bible says the king of Foster will not listen to her. Will not even regard her prayer. And he said to himself, one day, this woman is always coming here. Every day, every day, every day she's coming. By reason of her coming, I am being weary. Let me speedily answer her before she weary me. That is faith. That is faith. And as she continually went to the king, the king got tired of seeing her face and said, you know what? I have to answer her because she will kill me with a constant coming here. Mm. And Jesus said, that is the attitude we ought to have. As children of God, that is the attitude. God doesn't raise domestic children. God raises warriors. Warriors that can look the enemy in the face. Say, I don't care what you do. I am not moving an inch. I am not relocating. I am not, I am not forfeiting where I stand and who I stand for. He's here. And the Bible says, as long as the woman went to the king, the king had no choice. But to answer her, but to hear her cry, but to avenge her of her troubles, of her calamities. He said, having done all, to stand. Stand therefore. And the Bible went on to say, He said, stand therefore, 14, having your law and gift with the truth. With the truth, let's analyze this. This, this, um, Amos 
I must call them weapons. These weapons, because it's a warfare we are fighting, a warfare. The Bible says in 14, so stand there for having your loin. Where is your loin? Your waist. God with what? The truth. I put it to you. What is the truth? What is the truth? The Bible says in John, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. John 17, 17. It says, sanctify them by the truth. Thy word is truth. Therefore, what is truth? What is truth? The word of God is truth. The word of God is truth. Let the word of God be what? Wrapped around your waist. That's what he said. He says, stand therefore, having your loin girt about with the truth, and having the breastplate of righteousness. What is righteousness? How is righteousness? How do you get righteousness? Sorry? Doing the will of God. By being right by the standard of God. How do you become right by the standard of God? Through the word. Now if you look at every weapon, let's continue if I get ahead of myself. He says, and your feet shared with the preparation of the gospel of peace. What is the gospel of peace? Be shown with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The word. Jesus says, I have come to bring eternal life. He says, this is eternal life, John chapter 17, verse 1. That they may know the only true God and the Son whom he has sent. That is the gospel. The gospel to liberate people. The gospel of peace that causes you to be reconciled to the Father. He said, above all, taking the shield of faith. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Colossians chapter 2. It says, set your affections on things that are above. Where Christ seated above at the right hand of the Father. Set your things. Why we look not at the things that are seen? Because the things that are seen, they are, what, they are temporal. But the things that are not seen, they are the permanent and the real things. So when the Bible speaks about the shield of faith, the evidence of things not seen, you know that faith is believing that God can. So your belief comes from where? From the word. From knowing who he is. How do you know who he is? From the word. Wherewith they are able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. What are darts? Bullets. Arrows. Projections of the enemy. The Bible calls them the wicked, the dart of the wicked, able to quench all. We said what? Faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Let's, let me give an example. You are sick. That's a thing. Really okay, you want food. Or you want money. Or you're looking for a job. And the enemy keep bombarding you. I thought you prayed. When you are praying, God, by faith, I believe. Oh, let me go back. Let me back up. The Bible says in Matthew, I think in Matthew chapter 17, Jesus says that you shall say to this mountain, be that removed and cast into the sea, and the mountain will what? Will move, will shift. He said, if you have faith, you will say to this mountain, be moved and cast into the sea. Now, mountain can be likened to our situation. Our problem, the things we go through. That is why when we are faced with mountains, what do we do? What do we do with mountains? We speak to it. Words. The word. Word. Faith shapes. The word shapes. So when faith is being applied to the word we speak, it shapes and it causes things to happen. Jesus says the word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So when we open our mouth and speak things in faith, we know something, let me tell you, there's a difference between faith and truth. 
The fact of the matter is that you are sick. You need help. But the truth tells you that even though you are sick, there is a provision being made available for healing. True? So that is why even though you are weak, the Bible says, let the weak say what? I am strong. They are, they are weak. They recognize that in their flesh they are weak. But faith tells them, even though you are weak, but your declaration, the words that come out of your mouth, your profession shall be one of strength. That is what faith does. So when you speak words, what shape your future? You walk in the direction of your word. If you tell yourself, I am sick and tired, you will continually be what? Sick and tired. Until you tell yourself, I am not doing this anymore. I choose to go forward. You then will walk in the direction of your words. So as long as you keep saying, I am sick and tired, you will remain what? Sick and tired. And nothing will happen. So when the very dark of the enemy comes at you, you will take up the shield of faith. So even though the enemy is bombarding my mind that I will not make it, I will become nothing. You stand on the wall and you put the shield in front of you. What does the shield do? To protect you. That when the words of the enemy come, the faith tells you, let it bounce off. I can do all this through Christ that turns me. Let it bounce off. I am who God says I am. Let it bounce off. Greater is he that is the thing that he that is in the world. That is what faith does. It becomes a shield that even when the enemy throws it at you, it doesn't penetrate because the faith of the world bouncing it off. That is what the world does. But your mind has to agree with your mouth before anything changes. Before things turn around. Faith. This is how it is. By human standard, I will not make it. But by the standard of God, I can make it. I will make it. My future is bright. I will get there. They tells you that. The Bible says why men are saying that there is a casting down. We will say that there is a lifting on up. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 1 verse 8. He said, Christ has made us king and priest unto our God. And then St. Job tells us uh, that we are king uh, to, the, to God. He said, the, when, the, when, the, when the word of a king is, there is power. So if God made you a king, it means that when you speak as a king, he stands. Amen. That is why when a king is in his domain and he gives an order, they will say, in the name of the king. And anybody that hears in the name of the king, they follow whether they like it or not. So when you open your mouth as a king, he said, thou shalt decree a things and it shall be established. And the Bible says, when we decree things, strangers shall come out of their close places. So when the Bible says strangers, strangers are those things that are not supposed to be there that are there. Strangers are the things that limits you, that hinders you, that causes you to be bound. Those are strangers. And as a king, when you open your mouth and declare war, they come out. Just as a man, Jesus says, I give you power to tread upon something that's come and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by enemies hurt you. In which when you open your mouth and say, you see this situation encounter me, I command you to come out and let me go. That in you is a stranger. And when you open your mouth and speak the word, it comes out. It comes out. But the word Faith tells you, I don't feel like it. But you say, you know, it's not how I feel. It's what I know. It's not how it makes me feel. But it's who I know. Because emotions can lie. That is why when God deals with us, God doesn't deal with our emotions. He doesn't deal with us in emotions. Because if we follow our emotions, none of us will serve God. We will serve God in our convenience. I don't feel like going to church. So I don't go. I don't feel like praying. So I don't pray. I don't feel like calling God. So I don't call on him. But God always remains constant. So whether he feel like blessing you or not. He blesses you anyway. But how come. Is when we feel like. We do things. Because our mind. Is not yet transformed. Our mind. Is not yet renewed. No. How bringing change starts with our mind. I hear that say, free your mind from mental slavery. 
Change starts with our mind. If your mindset is not changed, you see, everything I'm talking about will go through your head and think I'm speaking in gibberish. Everything goes through your head. And that is why the Bible says, put on this weapon. Put on this armor. He said, and take the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. How did you get salvation? By the word. He said, and you shall believe in your hearts. And you shall speak with your mouth. You shall confess with your mouth that what? Jesus is Lord. True? So you get salvation by, by speaking words. And the sword of the Spirit, which is what? The word of God. So it therefore means, and it stands to reason, that the armor of God, or the weapon God is talking about, is all what? In one thing, the word. The word. That if you can have the word inside of you, if you can have the word inside of you, you can run through a troop. You can leap over the world. You can do anything you want to do as long as you have the word. Because the word is able to transform you. It's able to change you. And it's able to cause you to grow that you may grow thereby. Everything you need is in the word of God. Now let's go back to the story, to the armor. The armor of God. That you may withstand in the evil and haven't done all stand. Stand there for having your loin. You have something for your waist. You have something for your front, the breast, the your chin. That she's your front. The shield. preparation of gospel means you're going forward. The above or taking the shield of faith. The shield of faith. The shield of faith. The breastplate and the shield of faith. And where would you be able to quench them and take the helmet of salvation and the sword. So everything you need covers your what? Your fronts. You're going forward. So everything you need is prepared for the journey ahead of you. Now question is, what protects your back? Oh God. Somebody say God protects your back. That's one way to look at it. What protects your back? Everything is provided. Helmet for your head, shield for your front, breastplate to protect your chest, the loin to protect your waist, the gospel for your shoes to go ahead. The sword is a cut of everything that is ahead of you. So question what protects your back? Makes sense. You are not supposed to turn back. You are not supposed to turn back. We say God is the one that protects our back. Yeah, God protects the back. But on the journey of faith, on the journey of a revelation, of a relationship with God, you are not as you are not allowed to turn your back. The Bible says he that puts his hand on the plow and look at back is not fit for the kingdom. Because when you take your eyes off the prize, at that instant, something unexpected can happen. So it therefore means we have to be, be sober. First Peter chapter 5. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about seeking whom he may devour. So it stands to reason that when you put on the armor of God, you have to be what? Alert. You have to be what? Sane. You have to be what? Stable. You have to be what? Constant. Consistent. Because the moment you take your eyes off the price, distraction comes. I'm tired. Let me just rest. So that point that you are tired, all your guards are doing what? Let down. That is why the Bible says, give no room to the devil. This is a warfare. We are en we are enrolled or we join, we enjoin the army of God. 
He said, as good soldiers, we should do what? Endure hardness. That he that fights a war does not entangle it himself with the affairs of this life. Mindset. How far you want to go in God is solely dependent on you. But your mind has to be changed. Your mind has to be renewed. Now we go through, mind you, in this journey, we go through, we face challenges, we face troubles, but the weapon we need is what? The word of God. The sword of the spirit is the word of God. The breastplate is the word. The righteousness is the word. The law in the truth is the word. So it stands to reason that the armor or the weapon of our warfare is what? The word of God. There's no more, no less. If you don't have the word, you cannot win the battles of this life. Forget it. If you don't get it, forget about it. So as believer, what are we doing? How are we winning our battles? Are we even winning them at all? Now, in this world, Christ gave us a lot of scriptures. A lot of word that is able to help us. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you power to tread upon what? Serpent and scorpion. Let's pause. Let's analyze something. Why did God give you power over serpent and scorpion? Because he attacked. Because he gave him power in the beginning. The boy carried venom. That's true. So that's not where I'm going. Specific. You know when the Bible writes certain things, the Bible is very specific about, very concise and precise about what they're talking about. It gave you power. Why didn't it give you power over dragons? Why didn't it give you uh, uh, power over Levitian? Why didn't it give you power over demons? But he specifically said, Behold, I give you power to tread upon one serpent and scorpion. Let's look at the animal. Look. Because they are devil. That's one way to look at it. Now let's look at the animal specifically. The snake. Where does this poison lie? The tongue. The fang. What is it for the fang? It's the teeth. The tongue. Not in the tongue. The fang. <laughs> it lies in the fang. The tongue is not where the poison. When it bites you, it releases the poison in you. So it's in the fang. So the, the poison or the venom is in his mouth. This time. Let's go to the scorpion. Where does this poison is? The tail. The tail. When, when it stings you, it releases the venom. Now the snake is in the mouth. The fan, the, the, the poison of the scorpion is in his tail. It stands to reason. That God has given you authority over your future and your past. <laughs> to tread upon serpent and scorpion significant. That every power that comes from your past, every power that will rise up his head to thwart your future, you have authority over it. And over all the powers of the enemy. So apart from the, the end the demons that fight your future and your past, there are powers that still contain in the process of going to your future. So when you stand on the word, you understand that the word of God tells you that he has given me authority to tread upon something, to deal with my future, my present, and the process of me getting to my future. It's wonderful, and it's bright. My future is bright, I must get there. But before we get there, there are hurdles. Look at Jesus. 
Look at Jesus. When he came to earth, the Bible says that he came as a ransom. He came that he may die to redeem the world from sin and to what to create to bring to 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 to, to make the bridge that was between us and God. And the process of him going to the cross took a while. That in the midst of him going there, he had to encounter devils. They called him Beelzebub. Even Aaron wanted to kill him because of his future. That Jesus, when he grew up, he didn't have no peers. He grew as the only somebody. Remember what I'm talking about? As the only person, only his, his own age mate. He was his only age mate. That is why when his brothers looked at him and thought, are you not going? He didn't have friends. Because nobody was his age mate. So Aaron, when he was born, Aaron told them, go and kill all the children because Jesus. Why? He was afraid of what Jesus was going to become in the future. And he needed to twat his future to get rid of him altogether. But even though Aaron didn't succeed, Jesus had to go through. He was called Beelzebub. He was not believed on. People insulted. They even doubted in whose power he did miracles. And when he was to die, do you know Jesus didn't die on the cross? It's not the cross that actually died. He didn't die on the cross. What am I talking about? Jesus died in the garden. The actual death was in the garden. Everything was all formalities. Because the Bible says that he grew, he wrestled. He wrestled. That his sweat became like drops of blood. And said, God, if it is your will, let your will be done. But listen, if it's, if it's me to decide, I don't want to do it. I can't do it. Nevertheless, not to my will. And he died that moment for the will of God to be accomplished. That was why he was able to endure the pain and the only he went through because his mind was already made up in the garden. He died in that garden and said, you know what? It is just my flesh. That is why the Bible says, he said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but not I, but the one who died for me. <sighs> Future. I give you power. And Jesus said, that God has given me the power to lay down my life and to take it back up. He knew who he was. His mind was changed. And that is why God tells us, let the same mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Who despised the shame. As a sheep to the shed slaughterhouse, he went, he didn't open his mouth. He endured the shame and he died on the cross. A shameful death. Who for the glory that was before him. He saw his future. And he said, you know what? I don't care what it will take me. If it means me dying to become, I will. And when he died, the Bible says how God highly exalted him. And gave him a name above every other name. When he was in Jerusalem, they only knew Jesus in Jerusalem. His subscription or his subscriber or his followers were all in Jerusalem and the places where it wasn't all over the world. People didn't know him in different places where Paul and all the Christians despised and went to preach the gospel. They didn't know him there. They only knew, he only gave followers where he went to. And when God highly exalted him and gave him a name above every name, that had the name of Jesus, every name, everywhere you were located around the world. And the Bible says when he was to go to heaven, he said to them, all powers in heaven and on earth has been given to me, therefore go. And the Bible says that was where the church was born. And they went in the power and in the spirit of God. And the gospel is being preached everywhere. Before he died, he was only known in his homeland. 
But after he died, the glory that was ahead of him, Amen. your future is bright. Amen. But your roots and how you get them is dependent on your knowledge. Hallelujah. What's the time? Eight forty-eight. Okay. I'm gonna use ten minutes when it's eight fifty-eight. Now, where is the where is the green? Everybody putting their stuff in the green box. Please <laughs> the see the box. Paper. Put your your green paper in the box. See the box. Just throw it in. Don't write your name. Just throw it in. Just throw it in. The things that we struggle with, we need to address them if we want to grow. If we want to have a good relationship, we want to we want to we want to go far, knowing this Jesus, encountering, developing an intimacy with Him. There has to be what hinders you. Paul told the Galatians, all foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? You started well. You started in the spirit. How come you end up in the flesh? We love the Lord. We start good. We're all high. After a while, our love begins to dwindle. Can I have the box if everybody's ready? One thing, what I want to say? Anything you want. Why is it that I'm not growing in Christ? What is it that seems to hinder me? What weakness do I have? Am I the kind that procrastinates? I might just say that well, later I will come back to it, and when you come back to it, you're already tired, exhausted, and you give God your leftover. Why is it that you are not growing? Why is it that you are in the same place from when you got saved till now, you are still at the same level? What's going on? Why is it that I am not changing? Those attitudes, those character, why are they not leaving me? Why are they not? Why is it that I can't get changed? Why is it that when I lift my hand, I don't feel the Holy Ghost? I can't speak in tongues. I don't connect. My mind is always here, there, and everywhere. I'm never focusing on Jesus. Why is it that when I come to church, I can't lift my hands to God and just worship Him and just love on Him? <laughs> Why is it that I'm always distracted? Why is it that when I tend to open my mouth to pray, I am lost of what I don't even know what to say to God? But when it comes to a normal conversation, I can chat all day. But when it comes to prayer, it's like I'm lost. I don't even know what to say to God. Do I ever? Is there more to this Jesus that we talk about? Can I ever encounter him? Can I know this Jesus for myself? Can my heart truly connect to him? These are all the questions we ask and we struggle. How come I can't get up at night to pray? How come I can't sit down to read at least one chapter of the Bible a day? How come I can't make room or make time for this Jesus? How come I am too busy? How come I can't meditate on the word? How come my mind is too busy that I can't hear God when he speaks? Because God always speaks. What is delaying me? What is hindering me? Everybody ready? Let me give you one. Be there. How come when you stand in front of the congregation you can't pray? Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <you> say, yeah. <laughs> There's so much to write. Can I be better than this? Can God use me? These are the these are the questions and struggles that we we'll have that causes us to stick a pin in our relationship with God. And this has to be addressed. Why is it that when I come to church, I can't dance like David dance? You know, you know, growing up, where I come from in Nigeria, when it comes to worshiping God, right? Everybody forget their clothes, you know. You forget your clothes, you dance, you're in your father's house. But when I come to the Caribbean, I realize that it is a cinema we are in. So whoever is dancing, is dancing, and everybody that is looking is just watching at them, just looking at them as if you're watching a movie. But we all came to serve Jesus. We all came to me again. Why is it that when I'm in church, I can't express myself to God? These are the questions that need to be answered. In order for us to grow, we have to break the ice. There has to be, you know what? 
I'm going to destroy this. I want to move forward. I want to, I want to get to know God better. How come I can't speak in tongues? How come I can't pray in tongues? How come God has not changed my prayer language? These are the questions. Can I hear? Can God really speak to me? Can God really use me? You know, these are the questions because I used to struggle with that. When we're growing up, when, when I was in, when I was in, when I came over, when I crossed over Nigeria and I was in a group, everybody spoke in tongues except me. I was going to God, you don't love me. How come everybody's speaking that I can't speak the word going on? Am I the worst sinner? These are the questions that I ask myself like, how come? Everybody see that and talk about, oh, God came to their room, they encounter, they feed the Holy Ghost. And me, I'm looking, what are they feeling? I can't feel a thing. Can I get a box, please? Let's go, let's go. Let's now. You know, I put I'm gonna start, I'm gonna take everything out. I'm gonna address them. And apostle, please, I will need you to stand with me because we're gonna do this together. Amen. Hallelujah. Now the first question I'm gonna answer is somebody just wrote fear. Fear in what? That's to be precise. Is it a general fear or a fear? of speaking, of fear of praying, of fear of preaching the gospel. Let me stick that. Let me stick a pin on that. Prayers a long time. Somebody struggling with you a long time. How do you deal with someone that struggles with their alone? They struggle with prayer when they are by themselves. I guess because whoever is asking this person they can pray when others are praying. But when it comes to praying by yourself, I think that is where the challenge is. You want to draw light on it. Okay, the best way to, to pray by yourself is to pray the word. You understand? Yes. I, I, my eyes pop open immediately. I saw the person. But I will tell you for sure that you need to, um, you need to, uh, the Holy Ghost is speaking to me. Oh, Jesus. Uh, you need to walk with your Bible. Give me a Bible. This is how you pray when you want to pray and pray consistent and do not um, sleep. Amen? Take up your word. Find a word that you love. Okay? Begin to meditate on the word. And say, Lord, according to your word, my God, according, you call the scripture name. You say, look, Father, according to this word, you, will, you never lie and you will never lie. My God, and you begin to apply the word to your life. Do not sit down, no. Do not sit down. If you sit down, pray down. Because sitting down is going to go to? Ah, you say sleep many times I see you sleeping. <laughs> All right? So this is very important. All right? So that you can be able to, to move forward. You need to stand up, walk around, move around with your Bible in your hand, and begin to decree and declare the word. And once you are doing this, the word is no opening all the doors for you right and don't just don't just pray this word without meaning you have to pray the word with meaning and that's what i was saying earlier on that you have to meditate on this word so when you meditate on this word and you are doing this word in prayer the word become a part of you you have to allow it to become a part of you that is how the manifestation happen okay and you will frighten one day that when you finish work when you finish um, read the word, you will just lock the Bible and say, Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. You have said in the word that you shall supply all need according to his wishes and glory. Father, I, I, I have a need. My lobo kosha, I have a need. And you begin to, begin to give the need. And as you give the need, God will supply the need according to his wishes and glory because the word already embedded in you. Right? The Holy Ghost cannot use what is not inside of you. Amen? Um, let me add to what Apostle said. Now, it is difficult when you want to start praying and you're by yourself. Sometimes it is difficult. And one of the ways Apostle says is to get up and use your word. Another thing you can do is to play songs, play worship songs. That, that creates the atmosphere. 
for you to be able to pray. That creates the atmosphere. That remember when we were praying now and the song was playing tonight. And while I was praying, I I just switched and sang a bit of the song and went back into prayer. So what you do if you want to pray and you're by yourself, play songs, create the atmosphere, and you walk around, you sing for a while. After you sing all right, you, you realize that you begin to not just sing the song, you begin to think about the song. Or if you're the kind of person that don't not go with song, play a message. You play a message, then allow the message to play on the background quietly. So as the message plays quietly or what or a prayer, you pray a prayer. When you pray, let it play quietly on the background and you try to worship. The first thing I need, if you want to spend time with God, because most of the time when we spend time with God, we are always distracted. Where do I start from? How do I start? Do I read my word first or do I pray first? Which one do I do? Now, if you are confused like that, start with worship. Now, when you pray, the appetite, when you worship, when you create that atmosphere of worship, the appetite for prayer comes. Now, sometimes you might not pray immediately, but because that atmosphere is set, you might want to read the word. And when you pick up your Bible, while the song is, is being played, is playing, you walk around with what you just open it and you begin to read the word aloud. As the song plays, as the atmosphere is playing, you take up your Bible and you begin to read the Bible aloud. Like that, like that, Lord, your word says, you quote the word and you pray back to him. You pray back to him. The Bible says, my word will not return to me void, but it will accomplish the purpose which I sent it. Amen. Did I help somebody? I thought said prayer, prayer, prayer. I see prayer everywhere. Now somebody else is saying prayer. I think I've answered. Now before I go further, you, your hand was up? Yes. Okay, you said the word, but... There is a lot of words here. How do we know which word to use? Which word use to everything use? as you open this, this whatever. Take one. <laughs> take one chapter. Nah. Yes, take a word that take is Take one chapter. No, nah. sometimes I understand where she's coming from and I understand. Take one. Sometimes that is where that is where that is where the Holy Spirit comes. Now when you pray, you creed. And like I said before, play some songs. Play worship. Now, as you worship, it depends on the song that is being played. Or sometimes as you are being moved by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost speaks a word. He nudges you. Or you, you sing song like, uh, uh, more of you, more of you, more of you, Jesus, more of you, song like that. Now, when you pray, you be, when you sing song like that, and the atmosphere, you realize that you begin to pray, Lord, I want more of you. Lord, I more, more of you. And sometimes the Holy Spirit directs you to a scripture. Or you can pick up a phone and Google, where does the word say, uh, Jesus, give me more to you. I need you more. Draw me near. Call upon me. Like Jeremiah 33 says, Lord, if I call upon you, you will answer. And you, and you will show me greater mind. The, 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 the Lord, the Holy Spirit leads you like that. He tells you, okay, go to this one. Read this one to me. Or sometimes you just... People just do mini, mini, money, more. Father has a donkey, monkey, blah, 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 and you just open the Bible altogether. Anywhere you have open, you just read. Most people do that. But you can't grow like that. You go, you take them. You know, if you're going to read Genesis, read Genesis. If you're going to read Exodus, you're going to read the New Testament, read them. Take them simultaneously. Because if you read this today, I read that today, read that today, you might not understand what you are reading because each scripture might not confirm. But when you open again, let's start. I'm going to read John. As I pray, Lord, I'm going to go to the book of John. Decide in your heart which scripture you want to read. Now, as you finish praying and the atmosphere is being created like that, in the midst of praying, you open, let's say, John, or those who drops it in your heart, read the book of Exodus. Now, as you read the book of Exodus, the Lord begins to drop things in you and you see words that you can pray with. As you spend that, it, it has to be developed. It doesn't come overnight. It has to be developed. Sometimes when you start a place, you get tired easy. Our human nature. Because why? our flesh is not used to it. Our, our, our human nature is impatience. And I'm waiting for God to speak. I'm not feeling any Holy Ghost. I'm not feeling the music. Let me change the music. It takes a while for your body and your spirit to tune into it. But you keep at it. You try to the problem. You last three, three minutes. Tomorrow, consistently is the key. So as you begin to develop yourself in it, the Holy Spirit begins to come. Because the first time you call the Holy Spirit come, He doesn't come. 
The Bible says, call on me and I will answer. It takes you consistently calling on him. That is why he says, if your heart, he said, you will, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your hearts. So if you just want to do it because pastor said do it, you won't find God like that. You won't see the Holy Ghost like that. But when you determine in your heart, I'm going to do it. Okay, God didn't show up. I'm going to do it again tomorrow. God didn't show up. I'm going to do it again. Until God sees the sincerity of your heart, then you're not doing it for sure. You're doing it because you truly want to seek him and know him. Then when you get some, as you continually, when you get tired, you realize that the Holy Spirit is the one that begins to nudge you. Because at that point in time, your strength can help you again. It is him that empowers you. That is what we do, but we do not know how to pray as we ought to. The Holy Spirit helps our weaknesses. So when your strength stops, God takes it over. When you do the one, do the two, do the three, so whatever you do for 21 days, because they become a part of you. When you keep doing that and you don't say, God, listen, I'm getting exhausted because I've been trying on my own. Help me, Holy Ghost. And you realize that even though you ask help of the Holy Ghost, you still keep on until the Holy Ghost takes you over. Let me give you, I'm not trying to cut you. Let me give you a story. When Jesus told them, tarry at the upper room. Do you know how many days they stayed? They didn't just go, 120 people showed up in the upper room and they stayed and said, and the day one that they did it, the Holy Ghost just came. No. It took days. Because from when Jesus, from when Jesus ascended to heaven to the feast of Passover, when the Holy Ghost came, it was 40 days. So they were there consistently for 40 days before the Bible says the Holy Ghost suddenly, like a mighty rushing wind. So they tarried there in the upper room for days before the Holy Ghost came. So if you want to develop yourself, you have to consistently stay there until the Holy Ghost takes you over. Amen. You know, I'm eating. You see, that, that is it. When, when, whenever you're hearing word, you have to eat. And you see, I'm standing there, I'm eating. So I'm paying attention to every word. And, 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 and that, that, that place that she says, tarry, tarry. I choose that word, tarry. You see, so, so when I go home and, I, and I, I am ready to pray, I have to tarry for hours in the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing me? It's very important. So when, when, you, when you listen to the word and a senior pastor, you know, you see she here, I must able to submit myself to take from her and to eat from her and to, and to respect and to, to honor the word that is coming forth from the senior pastor so that I can be able to grow as well. Because just like how you sit and, and take the word, it's the same way I need the word, you know. It's the same way I need the word. I, I'm too big, you know. I, I, you know, a lot of people say, oh, a woman of a priest, a woman of this. Like, some woman has some word there. If some people now sit down and listen, I am telling you, would I reach further today? I am telling you. So it is very important. So while, you know, you see I'm there, I'm listening, I'm, I'm feeding from the word. You know, and one of the things that I want to add to that, which is the last thing I will add to that so you can move on, is um, whenever you are, you're, you're going to pray and uh, try to find an instrumental or something in worship and look at it or a prayer on the internet that kept that long for about maybe an hour or two hours. You now when I look, I look for three, four, five hours. You can't do like me. But you, you, you at least an hour, right? So you tell yourself, this is, this is long. And this is going to play for an hour. So when this finish, we finish. You, you, you understand? So you know that you're going to be praying for an hour. So within this, as I, I speak last week, I said, you go into the worship. You know, you begin to glorify the Lord. And then you go right in. Then you enter in from the outer court into the inner court. Then you enter from the inner court to the holies. And then you enter into the holies of holies. All right? Thank you so much. Now somebody, you were saying, you were already answering the other question, I don't pray long, for a long time. Yeah. Now, that is being developed over time. When I started praying, I couldn't even pray for five minutes good. When I pray, 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 I think, oh, I don't pray like 10 minutes. When I look at the time, it's just three minutes. <laughs> it's developed over time, but we have to stay at it. Like imagine when you, when you, when you go into school, and you want to write exam. You keep studying until the exam comes, true or false. So you keep telling yourself, okay, I'm going to be studying from 8 to 12. It depends on your schedule. 
you stay and you study, study, study until the day of your exam. That's how prayer is. You pray 10 minutes, you can't pray 10 minutes, you can't pray for long. You stay until the Holy Spirit takes it over. Remember, it is not so much you. It is the help of the Holy Ghost. When we say that the Spirit, that we have a Spirit in us, that bears witness our Spirit, that we are the sons of God. That the Holy Spirit helps our witnesses. Because the things we want to do in the flesh, we can't do. Because the devil tells us, you're tired, man. You can't make it. You didn't know that you walk all day today. You must be tired. And when it comes to prayer, it's easy for us to fall asleep. That is why when you pray, don't lie down. Don't. Because by that you say, in Jesus' name, you come. Stand. Sister Chinas don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Stand up. But it is not so much of the length of the prayer. It is so much to do with your hearts. Not so much the length of the prayer. God Almighty, we pray 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 3 minutes. It's the sincerity of your heart. After a while, the Holy Ghost sees your sincerity and helps you. It helps you. That is why studying the word helps a lot. It builds your prayer stamina. Studying the word helps a lot. So for those of us that don't pray long, it takes time. Keep at it. Pray three minutes time yourself. Or put on it, okay, let this song, this song is for three three minutes. I think the shortest song is two, two minutes and some, some seconds. Two minutes, 45 seconds, there's the shortest song. So you stand and you play that song and you tell yourself, I'm going to pray for it until this song finish. But bear in mind that your heart has to be sincere towards God. Because if you are doing it from your head, I just want to do it because I want to pray long. That is a wrong motive. That's a wrong motive. And with that, God doesn't answer such prayer. Amen. Now, somebody say fear. Now, fear, person just wrote fear. Fear is a demon. Fear is a spirit. Fear and fear comes with torment. I don't know what they are afraid. They just wrote fear. So I'm going to address it generally. Now, the Bible says faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word. Now, one of the things that will break fear is what we listen to. The things that we see, the places that we go, the, the our environment brings fear to us. And where fear comes, it brings torment with it. Fear doesn't come by itself. It brings torment. Fear of uncertainty, fear of the unknown. What if? What if? We lie. I don't know so many things. Now, when you are in that situation, what does the word of God say about the circumstance that you're afraid of? What does the Bible say? The Bible says, I can do all things. Everybody believe the word of God, right? Amen. Everybody can own the word. So when you are afraid, God say, the Bible says, God has not given me the spirit of fear. So fear has no place in me because I have the spirit of God. Fear of your future. Listen, your future is in God's hand. Just walk in the will of God. And one way to walk in the will of God is by walking in obedience to the word. After a while, the more of the word you take in, the more of the of the of, of, of positive words, positive declaration, positive things about God. Faith, faith comes, faith comes. You keep hearing the word. You keep hearing people say the word. That's why most of when you watch things on Facebook, a lot of people on Facebook, on TikTok, on social media, and you just see somebody pop up and pray. When they are praying, say amen. You know when we just cross and yes. just see somebody pray, yes. say amen. Yes. Get yes. involved yes. in the prayer. I want to ask. Like, like, some, like sometimes I... I can follow one one prayer in a in a mm -hmm. social media, right? right? So if that person, if that pastor or who save a praying, if he follow that person pray, after maybe in the night he following the person pray. Mm -hmm. If you follow the person pray, and he didn't pray your own, haven't you prayed? <laughs> no, if the the we are following the prayer, you, you follow the prayer, pray. you, pray. you follow the prayer, you join the join the prayer, yes. and the, maybe it's the pastor say let us pray. Yes. you follow them. Mm -hmm. Anything they say, they say, and at the stage you didn't pray your own. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know just how. So when he finish praying, you too you finish praying and you say amen and everybody goes. Uh, uh, yeah, that's what I'm. 
That's what I'm saying sometimes. Right. But you have not prayed your own. You pray his prayer, you follow his prayer, but you have not you have not developed what you call your own oh. communication with God. So even though he leads you through, now even though he leads you through, when he stopped, you are supposed to continue. Continue on your own your own until, communication, intimacy you, with God. You, you conclude your own. Until you conclude your own. So he has prayed, you followed him and said amen, but you have to continue yours. Amen. Right? Did I answer that question for a long time and the sincerity of your heart? Fear. So keep taking the word of God. Keep praying. Keep the word around you. Keep the word around you. The world is already chaotic. There are so many negativity around. So you don't need that. What you need is the word of God. The word of God is able to change your situation. The word of God is able to bring. Then Jesus says the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So when you hear negative word, they have the ability to cause you to be afraid because they are negative. And negative word comes with evil spirits. So when you keep hearing the word, I can do all things. My future is bright. God has got me. I am in the hollow of God's hand. The Bible says, can a mother forget that something shall? Yes, she can. But God will not forget you because you are the apple of his eye. These are words that gives you confidence, that gives you strength, that gives you courage to know that God says he will not leave nor forsake me. In any area of your life, you are afraid of your future. You know what? This is God has got me. The Bible says, I should cast all my cares upon him, for he cares for me. That the thought he has for me are of good and not of evil, to give me a hope, a future, and an expected end. You keep declaring the word over your life. After a while, that spirit of fear leaves you. Yeah. It leaves you. Because why? As you keep taking the word, the entrance of the word give it light. What we like and what happened to darkness? Darkness is expelled. So when the light of the world comes, it takes out what? Darkness. So as you keep speaking the word, fear leaves you. Now people, some people have panic attack or anxiety. But is it? You just see that and all of a sudden a cold fear, a sense of doom. Just so you know why? Because your eyes is not fixed on the word. There is no way you will have the word and you will, you will be depressed. Or you'll be afraid of something. If God keeps speaking positive things to you, the world keeps telling you positive things, would you have time to think about negativity? Yeah. Or let's say, anyone crying, oh, let, let me use a tiga for instance now. Let's say, oh, I'm looking for a job. There's no job anywhere. There's no job anywhere. How am I going to feed? You get depressed. And the same thing, like, oh, my life is going to amount to nothing. That's a demon. And that's a lie. So in the midst of the chaos, is God not still sustaining you? Is God not still keeping you? Why not channel that energy to what God, I thank you for the things that I don't have. I thank you for the things that you have provided for me. Even though I don't have a job now, I know that you're going to bring a better one. Probably I've not found the one that suits me, that will cause me to have time to worship you. But I thank you because it is coming. And when you're feeling that sense of doom, the first thing, be quick to play songs, gospel songs. To change the atmosphere. Because what happens when you feel a sense of doom? It is the presence of evil spirit coming into your domain, into your space. So when you play gospel music, it what the expels evil spirits. So when that sounds come, it overtakes your soul. And when it overtakes your soul, your spirit begins to what? Lighting up. Because what the enemy comes to do is to come oppress you and cause you to be depressed and manipulate your emotions. And you say, ah, nobody loves me. God has forgotten me. It's a lie. Please, someone like, I am a friend of God. He called me friend. I am loved. Wrap me in your hands. These are the songs that lifts your spirit. That whatever it is, fear has come to see. The spirit, the word of God will cast away fear. And when it comes to fear with prayer, you can't be afraid. That's why I tell people, when you come to church or when you stand before God, see God as a father. As a loving father that stretches out to you, come, my child. Let's say, for instance, you're a child and you have a parent and you're hungry. Who do you go to? Is it not your parents? God is like that. Hold on, woman, stick a pin on that. God is your father. And you go to him and say, God, listen. You don't, you don't, you don't form. Do you form for your parents? You're hungry, you start to speak English. Mom, you know, I went out today. I was seeing other people all eating. And I'm actually hungry, you know. But my belly was making boom, 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 boom. You don't speak English, you go straight. Mom, I'm not eating since morning. 
You can need to pray like, I'm so hungry, I'm very hungry, I need something to eat. That is how you deal with your father. Because he created you. He knows you more than you know yourself. So when you come to him, be real. God, listen, I don't know how to pray, but help me. You know what? I want to say thank you. That's how prayer starts. Thank you for the food. Thank you for the shoes. Thank you for the house that the landlord didn't show me out. That is how prayer is developed. You tell him, you be real. Be practical about it. I am alive. I ate three square meal. I have money in my pocket. That is prayer. Prayer doesn't have to be one ceremonial thing that you just start, oh Lord God in heaven, I thank you for how you have prospered me. No. Those are fake. Be real. Be real. Be real. The way you will have a conversation with somebody, that's how you have a conversation with your father. Then it is not somebody, it is your father, even though you can't see him. Be real. So the third is, you know what? I can, what do I want? I want a house. I want a land. Lord, I thank you for the house. Lord, I want a house. Do you know the house I want? Eh? I don't really have the money for it, but I know that you will supply. You're being real. Do you have money for the house? No. You don't. Or you're believing God for providing money. So you're being real. I like this prayer of Shiva. I want to buy you. No, when they pay me my salary in the weekend, I will go and buy the sheep. Is it not somebody you're telling that? You tell God that. That is prayer. It doesn't have to be ceremonious. That is why most of us will take a time and think, what do I tell God? What am I thankful for? When I say give testimony, what has God done for me? We'll be thinking, oh God, the fact that you're alive today is a testimony. You want to think of something sophisticated. No. That is why most of the time we put God in a box and we think this is how we are supposed to come to God or to approach Him. No. Come the way you are. Sister Chi. Um, fear. Is it not evil spirit that you need to be It's the spirit. No, I'm asking, is it not evil spirit that you need the deliverance for the person? Yes, it needs deliverance. Yeah, because yeah it can be delivered. Or the don't word. That. You know, if you use the word, that is a form of deliverance too. Huh? The word is a form of deliverance too. The word? The word of God. The Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear, right? But of power, love, and of a sound mind. The only way you have sound mind is when your mind is being renewed by the world, right? Your thought pattern changes. But can someone deliver himself or herself? Yes, that's what I'm telling you, wow. the word. The word. Thanks, you know, um, <laughs> there's so much I, I really want to teach the church because do you know that you can do self-deliverance? Yes. Look, now, with, with that spirit called fear, right? Now, the first thing you know, you draw for your Psalms. That's what you have to read. You know, it says, God didn't give me a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. And you draw for your back of oil. You, 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 must have, you must get oil and bring here and make your, 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 your pastor, you know, bless it for you. You understand? Or you lay and bless it yourself. You understand? And then you, 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 you understand? You walk with Jesus, praise the Lord. You understand? We bless it tonight for you, right? And lay and put your hand for your head and say, you spirit of fear, leave. The blood of Jesus is against you. God didn't give me a spirit of fear. It is love, power, and of a soul mind. I decree and declare that love shall take over me now. And fear, leave. Come out. And if you have to breathe two times, come out. Come out. You have found spirit. Get out. Cast it out. And fear cripples. <laughs> Bam, fear, leave. Wow, you understand? You have to do it. You understand? And you anoint your head. You say, look. In fact, as they anoint my head with oil, my cup run it over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Not fear. Fear you can't follow me. Is love and a soul mind is following me. Please, get out. Get out. Oh, okay, I don't, you know, I do something wrong. I don't run with that devil, you know, because he don't play. You understand? He's very serious at what he do. So you have to understand what he's doing and where he's going. I, I will share this with you quickly. I know the time is against us. Uh, when I just became a Christian, I met my wife a Christian, and you know, and so on. And they drill me. You know, Africans is all they be. They like to drill people. You understand? And when I go to the church, right? I mean, if I know to pray, I was going to another church, and then I got saved. In. And when I when I go into that church, me not know for pray, me not know none of that. Me just have to do my thing, but you know, and think. 
I must repeat the Lord is my shepherd for one million times. You understand? I'm telling you. But when I, when I, when I, be, when I enter their church, you know, that they, they are part of. At the time, my wife was the usher there. And when I enter there, and they begin to strip me down. I didn't know nothing about tongue really like that, man. But, but look, every Tuesday night, they lock a room. The room big, about right there. And all of me pack up in another room. You better speak in tongues for over two, three hours. You, be, you better bear tongues. You hear your tongues till a week. I'm telling you. I never got so easy thing to, be, to, to reach where I am. When I finish, they take me and put me on a bus. Carry me on the street and say, you're going to evangelize. You're going to teach you to evangelize. And they put me on a bus. And I have to preach in the bus car country. And preach, come back. And they sit down and listen. I say, good. Take me down the road and put up my... We used to carry me village. Up the village, we used to carry me down. They used to pressure me. Because they saw something inside of me. And they pressured me. Sometimes we wonder if they never like me. I said, what do you like, man? What do you want to do But I have reached. And fear, I have to get out fear out of me. Understand? Because sometimes we come to about 20 before we start preach. You know? We stand up on the spot, all up the village, and they give me the mic. Before me say me praise the Lord, we count a hundred long time. <laughs> I do count that and bring up myself. That's <laughs> fear. You understand? So God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. So I want to encourage every one of you to press in. Amen? And as 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 I'm senior pastor says, it's not the longness of the prayer. Right? It's the dedication, the heart. It's man see the other parents, but God sees the heart. Right? So the long the long praying will come time after time as you build yourself in the Holy Ghost. Amen? And desire to speak in tongues. Desire to speak to chop some things, man. Okay? Amen? Glory yeah. to God. For the sake of time, I still have two more. And we're going to finish this next week. I don't want to keep you longer. So we're going to finish this up next week. I just succeeded in answering. Can we add more next week? Can I add more next week? Okay. We'll add the more next week. No problem. No problem. Because I like this. Yes. Because the, 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 the end result is for us to grow, to get to know Jesus, to develop an intimacy with him. So anything that will, that will help to break that ice, to remove that limitation and hindrance, is what we are here for. Because everybody needs Jesus. Everybody needs to encounter Jesus. That when I am not there, you can be able to stand and say, you know what, I know Jesus for myself. Amen. So when next week will come, we're going to take up this again. I'm going to keep them in my Bible. So we're going to continue this. And of course, we're going to close for us. I'm going to take an offering right now. And we're going to close. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, social media, good night. Amen. Glory to God. We are about to close. Amen. If you have an offering and you're online, or you have a tithe, whatever you have online, you can give. Amen. To the honor and the glory of God. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. You can go to Zelle, or you can go to Cash Hub, or you can go to um, the website, and you will see everything there. Amen? The telephone number is there. Everything is there. Amen? God bless you so much. Amen? And as you're online, you can see there is a hub there as well um, for giving for the building fund. Amen? You can tap into that and be a part of of what God is doing here in Antigua. Amen? God bless you so much, social media. See you on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. God bless you.